Hey Booktube, it's Kim at Kay Becker's Books. I wanted to do a video, but I didn't really have any creative ideas or any agendas for specific videos that I wanted to film. I will coming up in the next week or two. I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to sit and talk about stuff. Maybe some bookish content, maybe some not. So come along with me if you want. We'll see what happens. <laughs> So I think this is my first purely chatty video, and yeah, why not? I thought I'd add a, add several things in here, and um, I had a couple questions and just some things I thought I'd talk about. I didn't have any massive book haul, or uh, it's not time to do my mid-May review yet. Coming up next week, I think. So I just thought, you know what? I'll just put something together that I wanted to talk about, and you all are the perfect crowd to talk about it with. I have a question for other booktubers. When, is there a way to set up YouTube so that I can see anything that I'm tagged in, any other booktubers videos who have tagged me? I, I was wondering if there's a uh, hashtag or something that if somebody mentions me in a video that they'd like to do, like me to do a tag, is there a way for me to, to find that out without them actually contacting me directly? Is there a way for me to let other booktubers know that I've talked about them or their channel or w have a question for them without having to send a private message? I just don't know. So I guess it's a technical, mechanical um, YouTube booktuber question. I would love to know if you guys have any answers. I wanted to talk about one DNF because I didn't feel like reviewing it in my mid-month review or wrap-up. So I thought I'd just put it in here. I had a DNF at the beginning of May of a book I think I started it at the end, very end of April. And it's called Hurry Down Sunshine by Michael Greenberg. I read the entire book. And you know what? I have to go back. It's not a DNF. <laughs> However, it is a low-rated book. I, I did not like this. I, I picked it up because I was so interested in the topic. He's remarried, but he has custody of his minor daughter from his first marriage, and they all live in New York City. The daughter's biological mom moved to Vermont with her second husband, so he has primary custody. His daughter is 14 when they realize that she is living with a fairly serious mental illness. And so it, it chronicles their journey to get her a diagnosis to find out what's wrong with her. I was really interested in reading that. It's, it's almost a very, uh, a, a memoir of a snippet in their lives, just a short time period in their lives. I wanted to read about her experiences how she dealt with living with a mental illness, what what could have happened as far as events in the past or family genetics that would have brought this on. There was, there was so little of that part as far as him talking about his daughter and how his daughter was living with this. What there was a lot of in the book was a lot of self-promotion and a lot of how does this affect me directly? It, the, the young girl's mother is kind of kooky and I'm not exactly sure. And it doesn't say why she moved to Vermont and left her daughter with the daughter's father. And that's no commentary on custody and custodial parenting. There could have been any number of reasons why that was the best decision for that family, but it, it never addressed it. I also was really surprised to read so much of the author's promotion of himself. He is a writer and he he put in a lot of backstory about a job that he had to pass up on, a, a filmmaker that had asked him to write a screenplay. I was I was just not interested in reading that part of his story. I also was not interested in the writing style. He he wrote it very much like a novel. This is a nonfiction book about a, a pretty serious topic. And I actually was just really disappointed in the whole tone of it. It seemed not 
so self-reflective, but self-aggrandizing, if that makes any sense. So I gave that a two star on Goodreads, and it, it's too bad because it's a it's a really important topic to talk about. The other thing, I'm not I didn't want to pass this up. The other thing that truly bothered me and made me fairly angry about the book is it was published in 2008. So there's 12 years that, you know, maybe if he wrote it now, it would be different. But um, he kept calling what happened to his daughter her crack up many times throughout the book. And that I thought I was, in, I was offended by that because, you know, typically we would call it a nervous breakdown or some sort of breakdown. But he called it a crack up and that really bothered me. It, it made it sound flippant or insulting to her that that's what happened to her is her, she cracked up. So I really didn't like that. And uh, two stars, wouldn't recommend it. Probably will unhaul it pretty soon. What are your opinions and thoughts about reading ebooks versus reading paper books? I, and I, I think I already know the answer. Most booktubers that I've watched and viewers have said, and friends of mine as well, a lot of friends of mine prefer reading paper books over ebooks. I also know that there are several booktubers who read prim almost primarily ebooks and or listen to audiobooks which is completely understandable and 100% valid as far as the same reading and reading experience. I, for many years, balked at buying a Kindle. And then eventually I was pulled over to the dark side and did buy one. And for a couple more years, it was primarily the way I read and consumed my books. I, what I was finding was these were the years when my now 12-year-old daughter was very young toddler into, you know, kindergarten, first grade age. She wasn't really interested or motivated to read as much as I was hoping because I was trying to instill my love of reading and thought that she would really enjoy that in her life. Um, she actually did start reading pretty early, but she wasn't, you know, I think at the time it wasn't any really big deal to her. And I started to realize that one of the best ways to bring up a reader is to number, okay, two of the best ways, one and two. Number one is to have books in the house. It is to display books, whether they're your own and children's books, have books available to, you, to your child. And number two is to model reading to your kids. And I noticed that because I was reading so much on my Kindle, she didn't see me reading an actual book. She saw me staring at a piece of technology. I realized that maybe she doesn't know that I'm reading books on this thing. And I started to think, I'm, I think I'm going to start picking up more of my actual books and show her that I really enjoy to read. I have a lot of books at home. I wasn't re running out of reading material. And so that's what I started to do. And then eventually she wanted to, I caught her looking at me and wondering what I was doing. And then eventually she wanted to sit with me. She wanted to know what my book was about. Um, I would put my book down and we would spend an hour and a half, two hours sitting on her bedroom floor reading her books. And then all of a sudden it was like wildfire. It caught on with her and it, we've never looked back. She's now a voracious reader. I call her a reading savage. <laughs> she loves to read and collect books as much as I do at this point. And so after that, I I started to value the paper books more than my ebooks. I still have quite a few books on my Kindle, and I do read them. And the only reason I'm bringing this up is I'm currently reading a book for the Maybe Midrash read along in May, which is called. In This House of Breed. Now, if you've watched my previous videos, I kept calling that book In This House of Bread, and that's not how you pronounce it. It's called In This House of Breed, and it's the story of Philippa, Philippa Talbot, who is a woman almost into middle age, who gave up her entire life to um, move to a nunnery and become a Benedictine nun. So I, was, I started reading that on my Kindle because I had had it on there available for a long time. 
I really am, in, I'm not, I'm about 25% through the book and I really am enjoying it. I wasn't, I wasn't enjoying the Kindle experience because I don't like seeing, you know, what percentage I'm done or what location number I'm in and reading the, the Kindle is not the same for me. So I ended up going online and finding a used copy of Rumor Gardens in this house of Breed. And this is a hardcover, old used book. I don't know if you can see that, how how yellow those pages are. There's a few stains on there. And look at look at this. This is the inside cover. Still has the Goodwill sticker on it. That's the inside of the, the end papers. And this book, it is from Viking Press in New York City, and this was published in 1969. And I can't find anywhere on the book if it says it's a first edition or not. It doesn't really matter. But I, I wanted the physical copy. And I went and I found the place that I was in, uh, that, which corresponds to where I was in my Kindle. And that's how I'm going to consume it. The only, the only rotten thing is it doesn't smell that great <laughs> because it is a pretty old book. So I'm going to uh, put it in a box. I think you can put it in a box with a box of baking soda overnight. And I think that's supposed to take out some of that mildew smell or the old book smell. And old book smells in general aren't bad, but this one is kind of musty. So we'll see how that goes. Um, now I wanted to, I just wanted to quickly show you some books that I'm excited about. I didn't, you know, I've been buying books, but I didn't feel like doing a, a big book haul video. Not quite yet anyway. So I did, I did acquire some books that I'm excited about. So I wanted to show those to you. The first one is The Spare Room by Helen Garner. And I love this copy. It's a little, it's a little hardback with deckled edges. And this is, this is also a novella. It's less than 200 pages. I think it's about, yeah, 175 pages. And this is the story of Helen, who has a spare room in her house. And a friend named Nicola is, becomes ill and moves into the spare room in Helen's home. It talks about their friendship dynamics. And the sicker that Nicola gets, Helen ends up becoming her nurse and caretaker. And so it's a discussion about their dynamics and their friendship. And I first saw this book on Sean the Book Maniac's channel and just was instantly intrigued. Uh, and I think it's going to be my kind of a book. I absolutely love those quiet stories and extremely well-written books. So I'm really excited about that one. I also just got in the mail the other day, also another short book. Just coincidentally, I don't necessarily look for short books to read, but this is Hannah Coulter by Wendell Berry. I think, again, this ended up on Sean's channel, among several other booktubers' channels, and I've heard nothing but glowing reviews. This is the story of Hannah Coulter, who is now in her 70s, and it's a Port William, Kentucky is the name of the town. It is a farming community. She is a, a farmer's wife, I think so. She's twice widowed, and she's looking back on her life. She's looking back on her life on their farm, on her relationships, her children. It's one of those books featuring an elderly woman who is looking back in time and contemplating her life. Again, I think this is going to be a book that I absolutely love and might be fairly emotionally devastating. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes that's a good thing. It could be therapeutic. I just finished reading Tim Winton's Breath, and I received Cloud Street in the mail. I ordered this used as well. I love buying used books, and I'm uh, fortunate to find them online. So Tim Winton's Cloud Street. And Cloud Street is actually the name, from what I understand, of a, what do they call it, um, shuddering joint called Cloud Street. It's two rural families that flee to the city, uh, and they find this joint called Cloud Street, where they want to start their lives again, start over. And it's a chronicle of 20 years of these two families and uh, what happens, how they, it's on the back, they use, it uses words, royster and rankle, laugh and curse, until the roof over their heads becomes a home for their hearts. I've really come to love Tim Winton's writing after reading Breath and last year reading The Shepherd's Hut. So really, that's, 
that book is exciting to me. I said this before, it's the little things, people, and <laughs> I love books. I love getting books. I love getting used books in the mail. And I think, I don't know, I think all my life I've just been a lover of stories. Now, at this point in my life, I'm a lover of stories as well as being a deep appreciator of art. And literature is art, especially extremely well-written literature. It, it's a beautiful art form, and I've always, I've always appreciated that and also grown to kind of discern what is what do I believe is the most well-written form of art in literature. It's, it's almost been such a, a welcoming discovery to me the more mature I get and the things that I'm attracted to. I love N.K. Jemisin and her Broken Earth trilogy, and I got this book, The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms, which is also the first book in a trilogy. This one, I'm going to quickly read some of the back. It says, Yain Dar is an outcast from the barbarian north. Right there, that hook, that sentence hooks me. But when her mother dies under mysterious circumstances, she is summoned to the ma majestic city of Skye. There, to her shock, Yain is named an heiress to the king. But the throne of the Hundred Thousand Kingdoms is not easily won, and Yain is thrust into a vicious power struggle. I don't care what it's about. N.K. Jemisin wrote it, and... Uh, yeah, love that. I also love the aesthetics, the colors on this book, on this art. I don't know. I love the blue and the gold. It's really pretty. And the last book I got, I ordered. Um, thank you, Book Depository. I'm still waiting for my copy of Maggie O'Farrell's Hamnet. <laughs> this is Evie Wilde's The Bass Rock. I had to order it from Book Depository because it's not out in the U.S. yet. I don't think it comes out until October. October of this year. Again, very quickly. Uh, let's see. Surging out of the sea, the Bass Rock has for centuries watched over the lives that pass under its shadow on the Scottish mainland. And across the centuries, the fates of three women are linked to this place and to each other. It's actually three timelines, I believe. Early 1700s, Sarah is accused of being a witch. In the aftermath of the Second World, World War, Ruth navigates a new house, a new husband, and the strange waters of the local community. And six decades later, the house stands empty. Viv, mourning the death of her father, catalogs Ruth's belongings and discovers her place in the past. So I have heard several of the UK booktubers review this book in glowing terms, and I it sounded so interesting to me that I ordered a way for that. There's a tag going around, um, and I forget the, the official name for it. There's actually two that I saw. One of them is the Comfort Read tag, and another one is kind of a tag about, you know, pandemic, isolation, COVID-19. I've chosen not to do either of those, only for my own mental health. I didn't want to really go into detail about, you know, what I'm doing as an individual, what we're doing as a family, how we're coping, how we're getting along. Um, you know, I think there's three of us in my house and I think all of us are stir crazy, but I also am very protective of our mental health and our emotional health. I individually am reading as much as I can. I am binge watching the Great British Baking Show, which I love. I am not a baker. I'm not a very enthusiastic cook, but I love that show. I am watching fun stuff on YouTube. I'm watching funny baby videos. Anything to anything to create laughter and entertainment. Um, I'm trying to find the the good things about isolation, if that makes sense. I, I'm a person who loves to be alone. I love quiet time. I love my own space. So if it was just me and or me and my um, husband, it would be very different. But because we have a 12 year old as well, it's been really difficult to watch her process and go through what she's going through. Not being able to go out and have activities, not being able to socialize not even be able to just go to the, the store or go down the road and get an ice cream cone. That's probably been the hardest part. If it was just me, I'd friggin' love being alone and on my own and being able to do whatever I want and go into work whenever I want. And I've also been even busier with work through this because I'm 
going into the office part time and working from home the majority of the time, it, the work is is overwhelming simply because the work cycle at work is producing more business. Also with my laptop at home and work availability constantly, I can't get away from it. It's always there. I've been very good at closing my laptop at a certain time and saying that's enough. I'm not going to do anymore. So overall we're doing okay. We've got enough groceries. We've got, there's plenty of toilet paper in town. <laughs> at this point, I think we're all set. So we're just kind of paying attention and, and waiting to hear generally what our guidelines are. What are we going to do next? What's going to happen? Do, are, can we trust reopening at this point? I live in the U.S. and New Hampshire, and without getting too political, it's almost painful to me to watch our leader on the news. I say leader loosely. I'm not going to say much more. I am quite often disgusted and embarrassed more than disappointed and that's unfortunate so I'm I think we're looking more towards our local authorities our state and our governor and that type of thing so not to end on a bummer <laughs> um that's about it you know we're we're doing pretty well and we're I'm ba I am baking more not not to the caliber of the British baking show I'm cooking more. We're looking for recipes. We are finding ways to stay interested and entertained and fill our time. My house is cleaner. Um, you know, I've got plenty of Zoom friends that we've been checking in with. The Critical Chicks and uh, talking to booktubers on Voxer and all kinds of all, t all kinds of good things that are happening. So that's my bookish chat. It's Saturday today, the 9th of May. And, uh, Hope you hope you felt like this was more of a conversation than me showing you a bunch of stuff. Although I did show you some things, some things that I was excited about. If you have any question, if questions, yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. But if you have any answers to any of the questions I already asked, please let me know in the comments. Or you know, Voxer, I'm on Voxer. It's K Backer's Books. Uh, send me a message. Do whatever. I would love to know your answers. I would love to know your opinions and your thoughts. So that's about it for today, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.